Shalom. Brock Tanya Hawa. Brock Tanya Hawa Shai. Brock Tanya Hawa. Brock Tanya Hawa Shai. Call Halayma Yahawa. Bahashim Yahawa Shai. Bahashim or Call Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahawa. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson the golden key, the golden key. <clears throat> I was listening to a lesson Elder Apostle Gabar did today and the Holy Spirit jumped on me after watching his edifying message. The Spirit jumped on me real heavy regarding the name. <clears throat> so I wanna go into a I want to travel back in time and talk about that name. And when you look at all of the great efforts that have been taken to conceal a holy name, it speaks volumes to its importance. I mean, just look at the biblical literature. It costs billions of dollars to print these Bibles all have a false man-made name in there, invented by Gian Trasino, an Edomite. <clears throat> so billions of dollars have been spent to give us a fictitious made-up name, which literally translates into earth pig. So that letter J was not invented until 1524 and did not gain popularity until around 1634. So that name has been pushed down our throat. <clears throat> There's a lesson that I watch, and I think it was Elder Apostle Tahar. He saw some small hats and he pulled up the name in Hebrew and said, read this. And they would just say, Hashem, the name. <laughs> they wouldn't even speak it. Because the Bible says his name is dreadful among the heathen. But nevertheless, I want to travel back in time and go to 1 Samuel 17. <clears throat> the book of 1 Samuel 17, verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. Shalom, beloved brother, Tzadok Ban Yehawada, Malachi 1 and 4, Malachi 1 and 14. But cursed be the deceiver, which had in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Exactly. So his name is dreadful among the heathen. So this is why, when I think it was Elder Apostle Tahar's video, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, when he was telling a story, how he asked the small hats to read it. And the name was clearly written in Hebrew, in which they could read. But they would just say Hashem. Let's read that again. Malachi 1 and 14. But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. 
for I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So when I was growing up in the church, <clears throat> I grew up chanting the J word. And true story, true story, but scary. People's eyes started to roll back into their head. They began to drool, shake like they were having seizures or seizures. I always struggled saying that. So they had tremors like Parkinson disease or shaking like they were having a seizure. And eyes were rolling in the back of their head. They would start falling and shaking, calling on the J word. Real true story. <clears throat> it even happened to me. So that name conjures up dark demonic energy. <laughs> Brother Mashiach Arazaka, Psalms 91 and 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he have known my name. So the key to salvation is the name. And the doctrine and the name cannot be separated. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. So the doctrine and the name are joined at the hip. That's why many bug outs are calling on false names and he can't understand the full doctrine. Brother Chazak Ban Yahawada, Psalms 124 and 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So the creator of the universe were able to tap into the fourth dimension, the third heaven, by calling on and believing on his ancient holy name. King David knew this, the keys to wisdom, understanding. 1 Samuel 17 and 41. And the Philistines came on and drew near unto David and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. So King David looked wet behind the ears. In the army, we say he looks like a cherry when you're brand new, inexperienced. <laughs> So he looked wet behind the ears, or new, inexperienced. And there's a secondary meaning of ruddy, which is dark brown with reddish hues, or reddish undertones. 1 Samuel 17 and 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? that thou comest to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. See, so these heathen are naturally idolatrous. They worship the stars of heaven. They worship man or kings. So they're not grounded in the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Neither fear his name. So there, his name is dreadful unto them. So there is no salvation but unto the Lord's elect of the house of Israel. So that name is connected to salvation. Yep, Brother Chazak Ban Gehauda, 2 Samuel 22 and 47. The Lord liveth and blessed me, my rock and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. Beautiful. It is God that avengeth me and that bringeth down the people under me. Second Samuel 22 and 49. And that bringeth me forth from mine enemies 
Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. So King David is inserting and turning the key to salvation, exalting a holy name with the doctrine attached, the right doctrine, which leads to the kingdom of heaven. Rulership starts with the building blocks of wisdom built on the chief cornerstone, Yahweh So the men of the house of David are the pillars that are being built upon a solid rock. 1 Samuel 17 and 43. And when the Philistine and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Call So the victory starts with the doctrinal name which carries the doctrine. Wow, we got to read that again. 1 Samuel 17 and 45. <laughs> then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. For well, the tabernacle of David is exalting the name, praising his name in the land where we were carried away captive, in that land of our dispersion. We are thinking upon his holy name. Yup, brother Tzadok von Yehuda, John 17 and 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. See, so the doctrine is attached to the holy name that leads to salvation. Beautiful. Same brother, Tzadok Ban Yehuda. Prayer of Azariah, 1 and 29. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, to be praised and exalted above all forever. And blessed is thy glorious and holy name, and to be praised and exalted above all forever. <coughs> so the eternal name leads to an eternal kingdom a glorious kingdom that shall never fade away. So we are tapping into the hidden mysteries of the kingdom that is eternal and that gives us the gift of immortality. Brother Mashiach Arazaka, John 17 and 25, O righteous father, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So this consummates the marriage. 
the blood of Yahweh Shai and his bride being joined unto him. What man has a wife that he does not want her to take on his name? So we are building an eternal enterprise where seven women are going to be joined unto the men of the house of Israel and say, only let us be called by thy name. So tapping into this power gives us power to reign over our household, over the heathen and Gentile nations. So we are tapping into a hidden power, unlocking another world beyond this domain, beyond this dimension. Our women are going to go into a righteous enchantment. They're going to go underneath the order of the holy men of the house of Israel, of the house of David. Right now, you can't tell me nothing. But see, that spell of Jebus is on them right now. So they'll just say, you ain't, I, can't, I ain't got to listen to nothing you say. You see, I'm my own person. I can do bad all by myself. That's the Jebus spirit. But the holy name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is breaking that spell. See, let's go here. The golden key. <coughs> We're going to go back to ancient Egypt. Psalms 106 or 7. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power not to be known. Oh, I got excited. Let's see that? So that name evokes and dispenses power. Psalms 106, verse 8. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. So now we can share in that power with Yahweh Shai. Through that holy ancient name, we are joint heirs to that power, to the keys to heaven. Psalms 106 and 9. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So he led them through the depths as through the wilderness, and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. So this is why the elites are scared, because we're chanting, Barakataya, Barakataya Hawa, Barakataya Hawa Shai. They're losing sleep at night, waking up. Did I just hear your Hawa? Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness gracious. Gee whiz, gee whiz. You see, because they never would have thought in their wildest imaginations they would hear this holy name be enchanted in the land where we were carried away as slaves. <coughs> Let's go to Baruch 2 and 11. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 11. And now, O Lord, God of Israel, that has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and high arm, and with signs, and with wonders, and with great power, and has gotten thyself a name, as appeareth this day. Ooh. So that name has been manifested, pursuant to John 17 and 6, John 17 and 25. And the mighty men of the house of David is being raised up from the graves, chanting, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. Yep, let's keep going. Let's go to Baruch 3 and 4. A book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 4. 
O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites, the valley of the dry bones. We were void of the fountain of living waters, dead men walking, dried up of thirst of knowledge. Baruch 3 and 4, O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, which have sinned before thee, and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. So this connect, connects beautifully with Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones. And we lost his name. We were calling on every other God under heaven, which are idols, other than the ancient power source, <coughs> Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Baruch 3 and 5. Remember not the iniquities of our fathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. Well, the Bible is a living, breathing word. Yes, this happened. But now we're talking about now. Although we were led to ancient Egypt, ancient Babylon, there's a resurrected spirit of the house of David, a rebirth, if you will, being born through the Spirit, born again through the Spirit. So this is the former reign, if you will. Let's get that. So the former reign is being poured down through the Lord pouring out his Holy Spirit. See, let's go to Joel 2, the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 23. <laughs> let's go to Joel 2 and 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be Joel 2 and 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So this is the springing forth to life, springing back, the rebirth, where everything springs to life. So the Holy Spirit is giving us an opportunity to be born again, that latter rain. So we're in these birth waters <laughs> and connected to that birth canal, the root and offspring of David. Yeah, how we're shy. Brother Gabar, my gosh. Psalms 124 and 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. So King David is exhibiting knowledge of how to tap into the heavenly kingdom. How to evoke the angel of the Lord, Yahawashai, rubbing that genie bottle, if you will, that pours out strength, power, the fountain of life. So the former rain, the Lord is pouring out his spirit on the dry land. Matter of fact, Let's go to Isaiah 44. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 1. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee 
Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen. Yeshurun, upright. Israel, upright, elect. Isaiah 44 and 3. Isaiah 44 and 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. So the latter rains is causing the valley of the dry bones. The Israelites that were dead to the knowledge of our heritage, to the knowledge of the holy name. To the knowledge of where our strength lies. See, Brother Awaken, Brother Chazak Ban Yahweh, Psalm 79 and 9. Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. So his name does matter, purple people eaters. <coughs> So we were dead in the valley of the dry bones, Ezekiel 37. But his name is allowing us or enabling us, enabling us to tap into our power. Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai. Baruch 3 and 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, which have said before thee, and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. First, first five, last high, <coughs> sick, were the borrowers, not the lenders, were begging in the streets, and were serving our enemies. Baruch 3 and 5. Remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name now at this time. For thou art the Lord our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. So we're doing that now. We read it now at this time. Baruch 3 and 7. And for this cause, Thou hast put thy fear in our heart to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our fathers that sinned before thee. So that power of the Holy Spirit is raining down on the Lord's new vineyard, the garden the kingdom of heaven is being built in a dry graveyard. <laughs> Who would have thought that this would be possible? I will work a wonder in your days that ye will not believe. Brother Gabar Ayash, Psalms 143 and 1. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Beautiful. So King David understands how to input and turn the keys. He knows what is the right key. Which is the key to use? Well, it starts with the power tapped into the ancient spirit of Yahweh, Ahashem Yahweh Shai and adhering to his doctrine. Let's go to John 1 and 11. John 1 and 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So he was rejected by a certain sect or segment of scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees. The wicked sect. <laughs> the wicked sect. So there was a two-thirds sect that rejected him. Not all of Israel. 
John 1 and 12. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. See that? So there is a remnant that's being purified, washed by the word. All throughout the scriptures. What's so funny, Tina Paris? Okay, it looks like you're scoffing right here. Okay, all Israel did not reject the Messiah. We just read it. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. He is a <laughs> so he is a prince of the power, or Yasharala, Israel. So we're being recognized. A new countenance, a new face, because the Lord's glorious wisdom is shining on the lively stones elect. See? So we're being cleansed. Brother Chazak Ban Yahweh, John 17 and 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the word cleanses us, makes us whole and new. So the author and finisher of our faith has sealed his name into our mind, into our forehead, sealed by his name, backed up with the doctrine. John 1 and 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the Most High. So Yahweh Shai is raising up spiritual sons and brethren, likened unto himself, led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, and cleansed through the Spirit or sanctified. <coughs> Let's close out here. Baruch 2 and 28. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, Even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the name of Yahweh be lifted up. So shall the Son of Man be lifted up. Is that not written in John chapter 3? And I'm paraphrasing. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. That's in John chapter 3. Baruch 2 and 28. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. So we are of the diaspora, the dispersed, scattered into all nations. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. So we are bethinking the ways of our forefathers when we were delivered and when we went off. And how to get back on the straight and narrow path. Keep the charge. The keys to the kingdom. Baruch 2 and 31. And shall know that I am the Lord, their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. So that name is the key to the kingdom, which is joined at the hip with the doctrinal new song, this new melody we're singing. Brother Gabar Ayash, Isaiah 12 and 6. 
cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Isaiah 12 and 5, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Excuse me, but I missed the first few scriptures. Let's read John, uh, Isaiah 12 and 4. Salakia, Isaiah 12 and 4. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. So we are triumphing in the ancient holy name. Remember in Genesis 4 and 26, then begin they to call upon his name. So this is a hidden power that is being tapped back into. It's like striking oil or finding gold in the field buried in the earth. Imagine hitting a certain line in your yard and black gold spews out. So we are tapping into an ancient hidden treasure, a power that is only shared with the Lord's lively stones, his fine precious gold that are glowing exuberance with wisdom in the last days, starting with access to his name. His brother said, that's right, like bubbling crude oil. The K-man can't steal this from us, like he stole the lands, like he stole our gold, like he took us down and became a culture vulture, stole our heritage. <laughs> he can't steal the Holy Spirit. He can't steal the most ancient of days, holy name, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. He couldn't even hide it because of its power begin to just exude on the earth and show forth its glory and brightness. So the elect are praising his holy name. Brother, let's go here. Let's close out. <clears throat> We're root 2, verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. Somebody post Psalms 143 and 10. So we're going to be led into the Holy Land, into the kingdom, riding upon his name, our rock, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And then the new covenant is going to be executed. The new covenant. We're two and thirty-five. And I will make an everlasting covenant. See? Then we're going to get new bodies. King David will be on the scene. See? Brother GMS humble servant Aharon. Psalms 143 and 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. See that? Beautiful. Well, the house of David is going to be equipped. New bodies, mighty men. Psalms 143 and 11. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, Bring my soul out of trouble, delivered out of Jacob's trouble, and put back into the promised lands, new bodies, new strength, being made perfect. Psalms 143 and 12, and of thy mercy, 
cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. It's too much. It's too much. See? Baruch 2 and 34. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. They shall be lords. I have said, ye are gods. Yasharala, he is a prince of the power. So no more will I women say, sit your ass down somewhere. And if you want something to eat, go ahead and order DoorDash or go to McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken and get your simple ass out of here if you want to eat and go drive to the grocery store. Those days will be over. <coughs> Baruch 2 and 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So this is going to be under the new covenant, new bodies, being able to use 100% of our mind and manipulate the elements and our bodies and our enemies' bodies. Brother Gabar Dama said, shit, she better make it, shit, she better make me a damn sandwich. More than a sandwich, or really in the kingdom, Eve is gonna have it made. All she gotta do is just be a lady and love her husband. Concubines are going to be doing everything. Servants, slave women. All she got to do is be a lady again in the kingdom. But in order, under her man, not a police chief or a damn city mayor somewhere, beating Jake upside the head with a caveman's billy club. That's going off, E. Going off. Or running for president. Or commander in, in chiefest. Bugged out. Only in the land of the daughter of Babylon, but not in the kingdom to come. See? Your brother says she better make me a damn sandwich. Yup, brother Gabar Diamond, Matthew 19 and 28. And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when a son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Connects beautifully with Psalms 143 and 10. He shall lead me into the land of uprightness. So the thrones are going to be occupied by the sons of Jacob and of the noble, <coughs> and of the noble regal house of David, the new ruling authority or the Illuminati. The enlightened ones will be established on earth, occupying thrones forever, where Yahweh Shai will sit on that holy throne of his father David for eternity. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying, unlocking the keys to heaven through the doctrinal name. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Come your Shirella and the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing, Barack a thumb. Come your Shirella and the Bad Baba. We got next, Lord willing, Shalom.